there are no wheels that will fit our supercharged Duramax 8 lug Chevy. So we have to design a custom set from scratch. Luckily, I know a guy. Binks Built, protected by Amsoil. With support from Roadster Shop and Nitto. Jonathan Peace from Spark Industries wants you to meet Matt Gamble and Eric Ryder. Good morning. Oh man, it's been a while. How's things in Tyler, Texas? Busy. Yeah, staying busy. We're all doing really well. I've been looking on your website. You've got so many styles of steering wheels you're doing. I love the one with the horn ring. <laughs> you're known for steering wheels, but you also do road wheels. You, you do some wicked cool road wheels. And that's what we wanted to talk about this morning, because we're doing this pretty odd ass build, a truck that is more than a derelict and so corroded that we named the project Lockjaw. We want to showcase our engine technology, what's coming up with our new engines and going to be working together to come up with wheels for our Lockjaw project, which isn't as slick as some of the stuff uh, you've built, you and your brother, uh, especially the Riddler car, that Thunderbird. And the 2012 winner is... You guys were just gonna restore the car for your dad. It was just uh, you know a car that he had for a long time. It was all original, numbers matching, and um, we ended up restoring it and making it a, a family project. You know, me, Matt, my brother, and uh, my dad uh, ended up winning the Riddler with it in uh, 2012. Obviously, it showcased one of your engines, one of your twin turbo six liters. I gotta tell you, never in my life did I think one of my engines would be in a Riddler car. I mean, that is an incredible honor. I'm so happy you guys chose my power for that car. Here's a really good front quarter angle. Is that slick? The lights, oh my God. I actually uh, took the, the logo for the car. I actually designed it specifically for the, this one, uh, this uh, T-Bird. Um, yeah, it's kind of a mixture between a couple different original logos, but the wings are straight and longer and the body's a little bit proportioned different just to make it more of a modern looking T-Bird emblem. Yeah, and it is. The heat shields on those turbine housings, I can't get those anymore. It just drives oh, really? me crazy. The guy stopped making them. Oh boy, that's a view right there, isn't it? This is a thinking man's build, I'll tell you. Oh, baby. Oh my God. Look at that wheel. So that was actually the, the first steering wheel that I had designed. I still have the original sketches for it. Yeah. But I think that's kind of where it, you know, sparked my idea, no pun intended. <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> to getting uh, into a steering wheel line and, and start you know, producing steering wheels. I'm almost ashamed to show you this after looking at that <laughs> Thunderbird. <laughs> but here is Lockjaw. Black Rhino was kind enough to give us some rollers just to move the truck around. Hell of a roller. Mm-hmm. What we're looking for here is something special, something that and that's why we're coming to you. We want the wheel to process air, help the brake cooling. Uh, so we started screwing around with some ideas on how that might happen. We're not trying to, to guide your effort at all. We can do ugly real well, <laughs> but doing really bitching, well, that's Jonathan Peace. Well, shall we jump into some, uh, some CAD here, Gail? Yeah, we can jump into some CAD and, and show you what we're thinking. It's eight lugs. We started with big openings and eight spokes. We're not trying to instruct you here. We're just showing you what we did. Yeah, so Matt, Matt and I were, we got the conversation started with Jay the other day and we wanted, of course, you know, it was all function, it was built around functionality, 
but at the same time we wanted to showcase the eight lugs and still have enough you know, opening to showcase the Willwoods as well. So we were kind of fighting those three things with of course the big thing being functionality and you know, have, serving a purpose and not just looking pretty, which I know you, you wanted as well. Yeah, so I hopped on SolidWorks and just started drawing a few things to try to, to bring out some ideas and start to create some, uh, some dialogue mm -hmm. between us so that we could come to you uh, with something that then you can riff off of and, and really dial in and make, make amazing. So like Gail said, we started with this just basic eight window, but of course that doesn't accomplish any of the goals that Gail just mentioned, which is to move air, to, to actively move air through the wheel. So through the rotor. Through the rotor and, and then out the wheel, yeah. And, and out the front face of the wheel which isn't a new idea by any means. Yeah, so started screwing around with some different designs here. Yeah, so we, we got the basic setup on the no. first wheel just to kind of get something in space and get an idea of what's going on. While Matt was designing all this, Jay and I were in the back on our phones going through like <laughs> 80s rally and turbo fan stuff and you know, the, the bolt on pieces and all that yeah. to try to you know, incorporate some of that, uh, the air movement through the wheel while kind of keeping the structure of the eight lug design still there at its core. Those are airfoils they're not necessarily spokes. Now we've, we've made a fan out of the wheel mm. and it's ugly as sin. <laughs> so now, now- Just wait, we'll get, we, we'll, we'll, we can, we'll really get there. Yeah. If you think that's <laughs> ugly, just wait. Uh, the next one was a pretty big departure from what we just looked at. And this was just trying to, to, to get stuff out there and, and, and look at things, so. It's visualized designs. Yeah. So the flange, the mounting flange diameter where the wheel marries to, to, to the flange. Eight inches, 700 thousandths. That's where the openings start. Uh, and then these are 22 inch wheels. With an eight on 180 bolt pattern. Yeah, yeah, eight on 180 bolt pattern, or for us carpenters, <laughs> uh, 7.086 <laughs> bolt pattern. <laughs> 180's nicer. Yeah. This becomes a, a total fan. Yeah, this is like some, something you would see on a jet engine, you know, a turbo fan. And of course, if you do this sort of thing, you're gonna have right side and left side due to rotation. Uh, you don't want it yeah. pumping in, you want it pumping out. I think you're starting to get the idea of yeah. what we're thinking here. So, so this one pumped in, so I redesigned it based on the, the well, you rotation. Put it on the other side yeah. of the car. Uh, that yeah, way. It, so now you've got a left and a right. Okay. So you see what we're thinking. And Definitely. ultimately, uh, we want enough op opening to honor Willwood uh, as well uh, as pass air out to the negative pressure. I mean, you've done enough aero, Jonathan, you know, uh, especially on the front, there's usually a negative pressure uh, I call it the bow wave or the wake uh, that breaks off the nose of the vehicle. And, that, and of course, these older uh, trucks are, are like soap bars. You know, they're no arrow whatsoever. So you got a, any speed going, you got a huge negative pressure. This one is definitely a fan. This is a fan. <laughs> so this is totally uh, function over form. But these things aren't going to show a lot of bag until we go, go to the rears and, and mount the, if you will, the motorsports tires uh, on the rear, uh, read uh, better traction. This thing is gonna really be happy. <laughs> it's just gonna light them up, I'm afraid. This last one, uh, we moved away from being a turbofan style directly. Tried to come up with a way to, to move air out of the, the rotor, through the wheel, and still have some, some beef to that wheel, yeah. get the eight spoke design into it, have yeah. some big windows, show off those brakes like Gail's saying. Yeah, this one will inhale air from the outside and supply, you know, centrifugally, the air coming out. We want this all closed. We want it to draw air from the inside. Uh, and that, I think that might defeat it. There's the rotor and the caliper can we go to cross section on the rotor and caliper? Yes, sir. So we're eight and a half inches wide uh, and 10 on the rear, right? We're kind of constrained on the front to eight and a half because of turning and when we drop frame, all of it. 
everything has to clear. The tubs in the rear will, will accommodate way more. So we probably go to a 10 and a half inch wide rim on the rear. And once, once again, the offsets will really determine what, what you do with the front face of the wheel. So he has to have the offsets. Yeah, that's one thing I was, uh, you know, whenever you reached out to me about this, you know, I, I knew that Banks Engineering, it's all about engineering. You know, I've, I've known you for years and you're all about the functionality and how things work and why it works the way it does. So I knew that these wheels needed to have some sort of function besides just being a wheel, you know. Um, but I, I think airflow around, you know, the brakes and also may, possibly making suction from out from under the truck at high speed would be, you know, uh, something that we could definitely, you know, incorporate into those wheels to make them more functional that's, than just a wheel. That's always a positive thing. You want the lowest air density under the vehicle you can get for a variety of reasons. Usually the bottom of the vehicle is the least aerodynamic and the interaction between the road surface and the bottom of the vehicle, there's a couple there, uh, aer uh, aero couple, where you're inducing drag. Uh, maybe more than the entire rest of the vehicle. The underside of this, it's a 66 Chevy pickup truck. You know, I don't know if we'll ma clean anything up, but it's uh, really kind of rough under there. So to your point, anything you can do to extract air uh, of course, if you're cornering, uh, that glues you down a little more too. Well, so we've shown you what we can design, but I'm really curious about your manufacturing approach to it. So I'm sure you got you know all sorts of money into CNCs, but uh, I'm curious. You know, at the very start, are you getting just big blocks and just kind of walk me through it? I'm curious to know. Well, for this project, I would start off with a, a big uh, block of aluminum um, for a couple reasons. Um, just because of um, the lead times right now for, you know, forge centers or hoops, they're just crazy right now. They're 20, 24 weeks to get a set of hoops, and that's, you know, that won't work for our deadline with this uh, with this truck. So yeah. uh, the best way to approach this would be to get a big block of material, uh, just a solid chunk, and machine it out of that. Now. For structural integrity, obviously a forging is the best way to go, um, but we're just going to have to design the, the wheel to still be structurally sound with using uh, extruded material versus forged material. Have you taken that into account on, on stuff that you design of, of your approach to it with, say, a, a forge versus an extrusion of how you approach like in the marrying of the spoke to the outer rim? Is that something you, you keep in mind on your design? Uh, definitely, uh, yes, because obviously with the forging, the grain flows with the actual shape of the wheel, uh, which is always better. Um, with uh, an extrusion, you know, the grain's just going to go with uh, one direction uh, yeah. initially. So yeah. um, the forces are going to be different, um, you know, at that spoke where it in integrates with the hoop, especially with a one-piece wheel, uh, which what, that's what we're going to be doing with this uh, project is just a full one-piece. Um, so I'm going to have to design appropriately in those areas to uh, make sure that it is strong enough, especially at you know, road racing and high speeds like what you guys we are planning for this We will go fast. Week. We will go fast. <laughs> it's not doing Pike's Peak, though. So. Oh, it should. You, you know you, you want to. We got another one for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're pull, we're planning on uh, Pikes Peak in 22. Ju what it be? Okay. July, early July. Yeah, last yeah. weekend of June. Yeah. Last weekend of June. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check your watch. <laughs> but yeah, that's actually one way. Uh, one reason why um, you know the collaboration with you guys on the engineering part um, for both airflow and structural rigidity of the wheel is um, a big benefit, especially for uh, the performance that this, these wheels need to um, uphold. Yeah. Especially yeah. for the material that we are required or forced to use, really, just because of all the lead times that are just way too long. Matt, uh, how do we engage on the engineering level here? Yeah, so the next thing I think we need to do is uh, start talking about how we're going to share CAD and, and share designs so that you and I can kind of go back and forth here 
um, and get this wheel finalized so we can start making chips. Uh, we work in SolidWorks, yeah. so I can, um, if you're in SolidWorks, I can share native files with you. Um, if you're not, I can share step files. I just, I start very loose and, you know, I come up with, you know, just what we call ideation sketches uh, to start. And then from there, you know, I go into CAD. Now I don't use SolidWorks. I use a different program that, uh, it's kind of a trade secret of mine, <laughs> but it's allows me to come up with really organic automotive shapes um, that you can't necessarily achieve with SolidWorks or any solid modeling program. Um, so that's uh, one reason why airflow will be so easy for me to, to model because I can get really organic shapes and then with my five axis machine, I'll be able to reach you know a lot of areas that a normal three axis CNC machine oh, yeah. wouldn't be able yeah, to get. Yeah, you can get around the corner and get on the back of the ball or whatever you need to do. Exactly. So if we wanted a, a blade and I needed to get all the way around it, I could do that. So, um, you know, that's, that's where we would start is just the initial, you know, sketching back and forth with your, you know, engineering models and, you know, come up with something that uh, we know that will work and look good and match the styling of the truck overall. That's cool. That's cool. We'll be going back and forth a little bit. I'm going to enjoy the hell out of this. I really. No, it'll am. be fun. It'll be fun. And it will be. The thing for us is, and this sounds like every automotive build show, we got a tight schedule. <laughs> SEMA crunch. It's going to be in the Amsoil exhibit at SEMA. So that's the timing. And we do want to drive it around to make sure it works. All right. We'll so we got a lot of work to do. Oh, yeah. If you're watching the series, you're going to see how this whole wheel build progresses. No, definitely. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm give excited. Me, give my best to your brother and give my best to your folks, would you? I definitely will. We'll be in touch. All right. Thank you. Sounds Thank good. You. All right. Take care. In the next episode, the guys finish fabricating the massive air boxes and marry them to the radiator core support. It's a tight squeeze. Thank you.